Welcome back to the channel on this crisp fall morning. I'm really glad you're here. You know, if you have a compact tractor or really any piece of equipment with moving parts, you wanna make sure that everything stays nice and greased and that's what we're gonna do here today. Now there are some very obvious lubrication points but there are some that you may not have thought about, so stick around. Now if you're new to compact tractors and equipment, which a lot of viewers on this channel are, and I appreciate that. You can, of course, look in your owner's manual, which isn't always very detailed, but it can tell you where the grease points are on your particular piece of equipment. But basically, you want to walk around and look for little grease fittings, or Zerk fittings, as they're known throughout the industry. And you can thank Oscar Zerk for patenting that design in 1929. It's basically just a little fitting with a ball check valve. Let's grease in, but doesn't let grease out kind of like a roach motel for grease. But anyway, you want to find these fittings and you need obviously a grease gun because what that does is it uses pressurized grease to, to force the grease into that fitting and into the chamber where you need the lubrication. So it's basically an easy thing to do, um, but there are some things that you want to make sure as you go through the process. All right, let's talk about grease guns. Obviously you need a grease gun in order to grease your equipment and your grease fittings. So I've got this grease gun. I've had this since I was a teenager wrenching on my Jeep and it is so old. It was even made in the USA. You don't see that too often anymore. This is a basic grease gun. It takes a tube of grease like this. It slides in from the end and works really well. Usually when you buy one of these guns, it comes with a hard little piece of pipe with this grease fitting on the end that goes over the grease nipple and that allows the grease to go in. With that hard pipe, little piece of pipe, you can take the grease gun and you can click it onto that fitting and you can pump the grease in. But that works great if the grease fitting is out in the open, but many times a grease fitting is up underneath of a piece of equipment and you can't get this grease gun under there very well. So you buy this extension hose, which is very handy because you can kind of fit this up into a tight area and you can grease it that way. The problem with that is now I'm holding this with one hand and I'm holding the gun with the other. And if you notice, this is really a two handed operation. So there've been many times when I've been laying on the ground up under a piece of equipment, holding this with one hand, holding this with the other, I've got my knee trying to pump the grease in, you stop, you pull this out, you hold it again, you take your knee, you pump it in again, and that is frustrating. Now there are devices like the lock and lube, which has a nice fitting here that clips onto the grease nipple, the Zerk fitting, and that holds it in place, so that frees up both hands. I haven't used one, they look great. To me, they look like they could still be a little cumbersome in a tight spot. So, what I opted for was a new grease gun. I just ordered this one, and this one is a single-handed operation. Now, I'm opening this for the first time, so an actual unboxing. Doesn't look bad. I need to connect the hose onto here, and this is a single-handed operation, just a small lever there. So I think that's gonna be really nice. So let's start out by putting the hose on the end. So basically I just have some Teflon thread seal. Here's the end of that hose fitting. Just wrap it around, turning clockwise. You know, put a good three, four wraps on it. Pull it tight, that's it. Now we'll screw this into the gun and just tighten it up with a wrench. I know it's not in focus. My face is in focus, but not this, right? There we go, turning that in. And just snug it up with a wrench. I happen to have a 13 millimeter wrench in my pocket. It's almost like somebody planned for this. TV magic. Let's set this old gun aside. A lot of good memories with this grease gun. 
a lot of frustrating memories with this grease gun as well. There are basically three ways to fill this new grease gun. And one way with this fitting on top, if you have a big container, this would be for a commercial operation, I'm sure, but if you have a, a big drum and uh, a, a, a grease transfer handle, you can pump grease directly into this grease gun. I don't see many people doing that, at least not in my world. Um, and then the other way is if you take this apart at the handle, simply unscrew it. If you have a container of just raw grease, you can put this into the end of the container and draw the grease into it like a giant syringe. Seems pretty messy to me. I've never done that. I don't expect to. So the most common way is to buy a tube of grease. By the way, for your front end loader, you want to use a molybdenum, uh, basically a molly fortified grease. It's good for high pressure where you have components rubbing together. Um, I happen to have a tube of general purpose grease here, but I'll post a link in the comments or in the description uh, to some of the recommended grease. I'll also post links to this grease gun and maybe some other things that you might be interested in. And also, I'm gonna take these leather gloves off and throw some nitrile gloves on. These are great because you can just get your hands dirty and not worry about it. And you can touch the grease. So make sure you pick up some nitrile gloves online or Harbor Freight or anywhere you can find some. So I've taken the lid off. Here's the tube of grease. There's a little pop cap on the back, like an old soda pop cap. Leave that in place for now. And then there's a plastic cap that comes off this side. This is the end that's gonna go into the grease gun. So the first thing we do is draw back the giant syringe until it stops all the way in place. This one's nice, it has a little button that holds it in place. The old ones you had to pull it out and shift it. So this is nice. Take off the cap and here's that little release right there, if you can see that. Very nice. Now, I'm going to take the tube of grease with the plastic cap removed and simply slide it in place. And push it in until it's flat. Nice. And then we can peel this pull tab off. Nice, nice dark grease. And then we put the lid back on. Okay, just screw it in. Then you push this release in. If you notice, it doesn't, the handle doesn't go in because the grease is in there preventing this spring from pulling in. So you have to push it in. And now the rubber stopper is at the end and the steel rod was pushed in through the middle of the grease. So that way this is out of your way. Once we've done that, we should be ready to go. Let's just take a little grease and bleed the line here. I'll pump this. You can feel it already coming through. There it is. Nice. Now the B2601 front end loader attachment has six grease points on each side. If you have the skid steer quick attach, that adds two more points. So you have a total of 14 grease points on a loader alone. The tractor itself only has a couple, but the loader has a lot of moving parts. So a lot of grease fittings there. Let me uh, show you a typical Zerk fitting rather than move this camera. I've got this little GoPro here. You can see here, that is what the Zerk looks like. So basically you've got one there. Everywhere there's a moving point, you have grease fittings. This one's really handy, right on top of the cylinder here. Then of course, all the way down here at the bottom, and then the skid steer quick attach has a fitting there. If you watched my recent video, number 32, You'll see the story about how I bent my loader assembly. 
So this loader assembly is actually brand new. It was just put in place by the dealer. So all the grease fittings are clean and has not been greased yet. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing this today. So anytime you grease something, you wanna make sure you have a rag handy because you're gonna get grease on yourself. You wanna make sure you wipe off the grease fitting before you apply any grease because it collects dust and dirt and you don't wanna force any dust or debris into that space. You also wanna make sure the end of your nozzle is clean too. Put that on. Just got grease on myself. It kind of locks in place. I like to hold it though. And then I can just squeeze the handle. That's very nice. And you really just need to apply grease until you start to see it spill out on the sides. That's all there is to it. But I still take my rag and wipe any grease off of there. And we just work our way around. Make sure you wear clothes that you don't care about because you're gonna get greasy. And as I've said in my past videos, tractors are just dirty. There's a lot of grease involved. So anytime you operate your tractor, just plan to get dirty. Sometimes these hands can really get stuck on here. And of course my hands are slippery. Probably not smart. Let me know in the comments if you've had an experience with the grease connection getting stuck onto the Zerk fitting. Why does that happen? Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but I can't get this end off of the Zerk fitting. It is just stuck on there really tight. All right, well, I'm just gonna throw this set of fence pliers on here. Let's see if I can tap it off. It's not working. Can we pry it off? Got it. All right, I'm going vlog style here for just a moment because I was inside the editing and I was really frustrated about that grease gun fitting getting stuck on the Zerk fitting. So I did some Googling and I saw some suggestions about this collar on the top of the fitting that if you loosen this collar up, it can work as kind of like a, a chuck or a, a collet situation and release from the fitting. So I went back out to the tractor, got it stuck again, tried loosening the collar. Uh, it was difficult to do with the pressure on it, but I was able to release it. It didn't seem to work for me, at least not for this unit. So if that's one of the solutions, uh, no go for me. So if you have any other ideas, let me know. Uh, I think that uh, I may have to look into one of those lock and lubes and see if that does the trick. All right, back to the project. Well, at this point, I've greased up all the grease fittings on the front end loader and the quick attach, skid steer quick attach, SSQA for short. So that's done. There's one grease point underneath the brake pedal on the other side. That's a simple one. Let's go back to the three point hitch. So here are a couple areas that you may not have thought about. There are no grease fittings back here other than on the right uh, lift link. On this side, there's a small grease fitting. Uh, that is something that 
you just fill it with a little bit of grease. I don't think you have to do it that often. And then your top link also has a grease fitting on it. Usually, you pump grease into a fitting until you see it, see it start to come out the other side. You don't want to do that with your top link uh, because basically it fills this entire chamber with grease and then it makes it difficult to screw this together. That's experience talking, by the way. Now back here on the three-point hitch, there are a couple places that you want to grease. This is why it's great to have these gloves because you can just put a little bit of grease on your finger. Hi, Hotch. And just wipe it on your PTO shaft. So you don't have to worry about getting dirty. Wipe it on your PTO shaft. And then on your three-point link, uh, three-point hitch, you have these connecting balls on the bottom. This is all the way down, so you can't really see it too well. So these balls that rotate and your pins go through that, take some grease on your fingers wipe it around, make sure these move freely. You've got to set up in the front there. You'd have to take those off and do the same thing, but it's good to do that every now and then too. I'll put a little bit of grease on my fingertip. And just work it around here. It's like finger painting. Well, that's gonna do it for today, basically a Kind of a dirty job, but something you want to keep done frequently on your tractor. So just look for those Zerk points, those Zerk fittings. Look for any moving parts. Um, put the grease on. If it doesn't have a grease fitting, use your glove and just rub it around a little bit. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you've not yet subscribed, please click that subscribe button. Click the like button if you like the content. And if you tap that little bell and make it turn gray, You'll be notified each time I put out a new video. Until then, I'll see you next time.